Well, hello there, everybody. Um, I decided to revisit overclocking of uh, GTX 960 because I've recently, well, not recently, but today, I sat down and I wanted to test Witcher 3 with overclocked uh, GTX 960. And um, I decided for some reason to not use my old uh, settings that I found for the card, but to mess around and see if I can get it even higher. And I was surprised. I mean, you'd be surprised uh, what uh, updates, driver updates, uh, can actually do. So I'll tell you now. Uh, I was not, last time I've done this, I was not able to go anywhere past 140 plus 140 on the core mark without having crashes without increasing the voltage that is and previously the voltage was locked anyway on my card but uh, that's unlocked now so um, I'm not going to use voltage for this overclock though but I will explain to you exactly what the voltage is for uh, basically it's when you reach your maximum on the core and the memory uh, that's the core voltage so once you reach your maximum on the core and you get start getting visual artifacts and uh, anything un unstable basically uh, if there are graphics anomalies and crashes then you can go ahead and increase the voltage by five or ten points uh, to start uh, to try and make it stable again it's uh, it's pretty safe to do that I mean it only goes uh, up by 50 millivolts that's like nothing you know, um, but uh, do bear in mind that as you increase your voltage, uh, the card starts consuming more power and it will put out more heat. Not considerably more because uh, I've I've done like plus 20 uh, previously on this card and it was set on auto fan and it wouldn't go any anywhere higher than 66 percent with fans running at less than 40 percent uh, by the way it's a kfa2 gtx 960 ex oc black edition card so just for anyone who's wondering and uh, any programs that you can see here me uh, you can see me using you can get them for free i will put the links in the description below this video and uh, basically well basically this is let me show you this is the setup uh, that i've uh, that i found without increasing the core voltage and it works absolutely fine so that's plus 500 on the memory plus 160 on the core so that gives you 8 gigahertz of memory speed and uh, over 1.6 gigahertz on the core when it boosts so you need MSI afterburner and Unigen Heaven benchmark to stress your GPU also you want to set up your statistics your monitoring statistics like so temperature core memory and power limits I don't know what's up with power limit but it seems to be not working so I had to just increase it to the maximum but your yours will likely work so you have to monitor it and if it goes uh, above 100% or close to 100% that's when you start increasing your power limit as well or you can just increase your power limit straight away and then just uh, if you want to tweak it later on uh, you can do that but it's no big deal because the power uh, for the power limit the card is not going to draw more power than it needs anyway, so that's absolutely fine So what you do is first uh, before you uh, continue you can before you begin overclocking you can just um, run the benchmark and Take a note of uh, What's the frame rate that you're getting the average the minimum the maximum and then after you've done overclocking run the test again and see uh, how how much performance you have gained you can use this heaven benchmark for that Anyways, so let's go ahead and set up the benchmark. So I set it up to high normal on tessellation and 2x uh, AA and I've removed full screen mode because we want to run this in windowed mode and You start the benchmark and you use alt tab to bring up the MSI afterburner put it in this corner here 
make sure that you're running the latest driver version for your card. As I said, that made a big difference for me because I've done it, uh, the overclock a very long time ago and it, it helps. It helps to have up-to-date drivers to achieve uh, higher overclocks. So as you can see now straight away, uh, it's 1527, right? But I will show you from the beginning what I've done. So basically, I went ahead and increased the power limit right away. And uh, then go ahead and start increasing your memory because you want to find your memory clock first. Uh, on this card, it's absolutely fine to go in increments of 50. So you take, you choose the step and then you take it. So it's plus 50 for me. Uh, hit apply and you watch the picture here for any signs of unstable graphics, any graphic anomalies, uh, any tearing, any dark spots, any uh, weird colorful spots. Uh, that means that your overclock is becoming unstable and you either have to increase your core voltage if you've been increasing your core or go back uh, one step. Whatever you've done, for example, if you increased your memory to the next step and it didn't work, then you know that you need to take a step back to where you've been and that will be your uh, highest setting. But I've been taking steps in 50, plus 50, pl press apply and then watch again this picture right here for any signs of instability. And I was going step by step, step by step and I got to 500 and basically I thought that that was enough because I've overclocked quite a few uh, GTX 900 series and it al it's always it always overclocks to something like 550 uh, to the highest I had was 585 on the memory but you don't want to uh, to you know to run it that high anyway so 500 is more than enough that gives you 8 gigahertz of effective memory and once you've found your maximum memory clock and you basically you chose the correct option for the for the memory that you want to use mine was plus 500 you want to go ahead and start increasing your core clock uh, i like going slow on core clock increase it by 10 and um, that's just in case if you run into a very unstable overclock that can freeze your system if you increase it by big increments but if you increase it by small increments of 10 or so uh, it's gonna probably in the most cases it only causes instability in uh, you will see like s visual anomalies in the graphics or uh, basically anything like crashing of this benchmark or driver crashes and then restores itself so you won't have to like manually reset your pc and that eliminates the possibility of damaging your operating system or even your hardware so basically here step here we do steps plus plus 20 oh, i'm sorry plus 10 every time plus 10 hit apply and then watch the picture and you take it step by step step by step again and once again, once you reach that maximum, then you know if you've uh, pressed um, 180 and pressed apply and it wasn't working correctly, you see physical, not physical, uh, graphical anomalies and uh, other nasty stuff, then you know that you need to t take a step back to 170, hit apply, and then basically you can just stress test it from there. What stress testing is, is when you found your, uh, your highest setting possible and you think that it's, uh, that it's stable now, you've watched it for like a minute or so and you see that your overclock is pretty much stable, that's when you stress test it by leaving the benchmark running for a while, for example for 10-20 minutes, uh, it's better to watch it but, you know, whatever. Um, you can just leave it but I wouldn't recommend it I recommend to just sit and keep an eye on it uh, just in case if you see any any sort of visual anomalies or anything crashes just in case 
But if you've reached your maximum and you want to go higher, as I said, for example, this one was I was getting um, I was getting artifacts at one at plus one seventy. So what I've done was I increased it by plus five at first. Hit apply. Uh, anomalies did not go away, so it, they were still flickering. Like every once in ten to twenty seconds, I would see uh, some spots of weird colors. So I went ahead and increased it by another five to plus ten. Uh, that didn't solve it. Then I went ahead plus fifteen, and at plus fifteen, it stabilized again at one seventy. So you can see how it works. But that's basically it. Once you've stress tested your uh, your overclock in the benchmark, what you want to do next is uh, test it in games. Because even though in the benchmark it was absolutely fine, uh, you would still you still can encounter problems in the game. Uh, for example, it can work fine in Witcher 3. It can work fine in Tomb Raider. But then you fire up Battlefield 4, play a few hours, and then bam, game crashes or you get the blue screen or the computer freezes and that is basically the sign for you to go ahead enter your uh, enter your MSI afterburner again into doing the tweaking so you either have to go back on the core or go back on the memory reduce those and then play the same game that you had trouble with again and see if that problem persists if it happens again then you need to make sure that you go back again on the core or on the, or on the memory or alter alternatively increase the core voltage that is the alternative so basically that is it and if you have a good um, after market card cooler like I have with two fans it doesn't matter you don't have to set up this user defined profile uh, for fans you don't have to set up the fan curve you can just uh, leave it on auto it's not a problem at all as i said as you've seen there we go it was running at full overclock at 66 67 degrees that's nothing so that's pretty good and um yeah i hope those of you who got their 960s and you still haven't overclocked them then maybe you should try because that gives you a real performance boost, especially if you have like a game, like Witcher 3, that you want to play at higher settings and at uh, higher FPS, then this is something that will help you. Until next time, RG out.